Welcome to the Texas Conflict Coach radio program. If you've ever experienced or engaged in destructive or unresolved conflict, then you know it leads to broken relationships, distrust, and damaging results. Our program will help you manage and resolve conflict effectively with strategies, valuable resources, and support. Since 2009, our radio program hosted guest experts from around the globe sharing their perspectives, experiences, and expertise while giving you food for thought. If you can't listen live, then download and listen to any of our 300-plus podcasts in our library at texasconflictcoach.com. So sit back, relax, or join the conversation every Tuesday evening or tweet us at TX Conflict Coach. Tragedy not only destroys families, it leaves aftershocks of substance abuse, violence, and hatred within the community. Calling upon centuries of tradition and experience, Navajo peacemakers use their traditional wisdom, methods, and customs to help deal with this tragedy. These peacemakers are a combination of leader, teacher, and healer who work to bring people out of chaos and into balance by using traditional stories and teachings. This tradition seeks first to move inward towards the core issue or underlying truth of the tragedy. Recognition of this truth and and the denial that surrounds it provides the opportunity for healing and mutual mending of broken relationships within families and communities. Hello, I'm Stephen Kotov, along with my guest host, Zina Zemeta, and today we are discussing Navajo peacemaking, bringing indigenous wisdom into community, into healing community tragedies with Rob Redsteer. Rob is the founder of the Natali Alliance for Peace and a member of the Navajo Nation. He is an educator, trainer, and tribal peacemaker with experience in land use, environmental degradation, nutrition, and cultural legacy. Welcome to the show, Rob. Good afternoon. Thanks a lot, Stefan, and thank you, Zina. Um, it's a good day out here. How's everybody out there? <laughs> we're doing we're doing fine, and we just really want to welcome you to the show. Well, thank you, thank and, you. And Rob, do you want to do any formal introduction of yourself? Yes. Uh, normally, um, we give our uh, our clan. Identities, uh, my name is Robert Redster. I'm from uh, the community of Loop in the Navajo Reservation in the southwest part of the reservation. I'm right now in Apache Edgewater, born for the Many Goats people, and um, I've lived out here in the southwest for many years, and I also um, come from another community, my mother's community of Clagato, Arizona. Thank so, you. So, so you're... Your whole family is on, as, as far as I understand, the, the, the biggest reserv- reservation in the entire country. Is that right? Oh, yes, it is. It's uh, indeed the, the largest um, landmass, and um, it's, uh, it covers Arizona, New Mexico, and Utah in those areas. So it's a, it's a, it's a large area, and, and what, what, you've been doing for a while now is is that you're a traditional peacemaker. So can you tell us a little bit about how you became a peacemaker? Yeah, certainly. Um, let's see. Uh, I've been doing this for about what, about 10 years now, but before that uh, I was in uh, uh, the business world. I was uh, into materials management uh, in the electronics field and procurement and customer service for 15 years. And, I got tired of that, so I went back to school at Northern Arizona University. And um, while I was in school, I was uh, doing some volunteer work in my community in relation to a uh, um, construction freeze imposed by Congress in my community, as well as eight other reservation communities, um, called the Bennett Freeze. And um, at that time, we couldn't build anything. It was imposed in 1966. And uh, so I was working toward um, rebuilding uh, our communities in terms of infrastructure and uh, bringing families together so we could talk through these issues. And the freeze was eventually lifted, and we're working on building homes right now. But um, that, in turn, brought me into peacemaking as I know it today. I met um, uh, retired Chief Justice Robert Yazzie 
and Filmer Blue House is a noted uh, Navajo peacemaker. And with them, um, they more or less uh, more or less crafted my skills and um, made me who I am today. And I work in peacemaking, but um, beyond that, I kick it further. Um, uh, I work with uh, peace building skills and uh, work with uh, conflict transformation of people. So um, I not you, you're um, the Navajo peacemaker to say, but I go a little beyond that. So, so Rob, can you can you tell us a little bit about Navajo peacemaking? Certainly, um, it comes from the uh, beauty way ceremony, and um, it uh, goes back to our creation um, stories where um, we had uh, evil and um, uh, lots of violence in the beginning of the, uh, when the world was created and we had monsters and people just were not um, surviving very well. So um, the twin uh, uh, warrior twins, um, Born for Water and Monster Slayer, um, cleansed the world of um, all the evils. So what happened then was uh, they were out of balance. And so the beauty waste ceremony was created by the Mother Changing Woman. And she, um, uh, from this came the peacemaking tradition. So uh, it's basically, um, it's all relational. It's getting along with your people, um, other people, and according to everybody, respect. And um, we all live on this land, and so we all have to get, get along together as um Pretty much the, the basic message. So how does it work? I'm sorry? How does it work? How does it work? It's a circle process where you get um, two disputing parties together and um, you establish identity for one, and then um, from identity, identity you establish um, relationships within the clan system and uh, how you address one another. Say the... Uh, Disputing party might be related to the other party in terms of uh, they might be like their uncles and aunts, and so it's addressed that way. They might be their grandparents. They might be their brother or sister. And so it's in that light that they um, tackle the problem, and um, nobody is guilty, nobody is innocent. It's equal. Everybody has a chance to talk. Um, there's no judge there, so there's no um, – um, the the parties can openly talk and feel safe in that environment. And like I said, everybody's equal. The, the problem of Nahote is what we call it in Navajo, is brought out. And then it's, um, and then, um, the, uh, peacemaker is the one that, um, guides the process and, um, um, comes to his or her, um, outcome in all of this. And by talking through your issues and facing your monsters and, uh, um, coming to terms with it as a group, um, outcomes are established, um, goals are established, and uh, you work toward them. And it's not an immediate process that's done like a, in like a three-hour session. It takes time. Establishing peace um, takes time. We look at it in terms of three generations down the road to uh, sustain that peace. So it's constant follow-up by the peacemaker to go back and make sure that all the parties are um, upholding their end. So, you know, Rob, as, as I'm listening to you, it it sounds like, you know, the the stories that you mentioned and 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 uh, what happens in them. That sounds like that's kind of uh, an example that. You, that you all use as as uh, as guidance for how you how you in a sense interact with each other and kind of how you live your life. Is that is that right? Yes, that's right. On the uh, the peacemaker um, has to be skilled in the uh, the creation stories, the uh, um, uh, the beauty way, and knowing the uh, stories and songs with it. Because in some of the peacemaking sessions, the peacemaker will start singing. Um, protection songs or or beauty way songs, whatever is appropriate for the session. Not all sessions go that way, but sometimes they will rely on that. And then they'll also tie in the um, creation stories as to why we have this particular problem. Uh, they relate it back to uh, uh, 
say, for example, um, the coyote story, where the coyote did something, um, they caused the problem, this was the outcome of the problem, and this is how it was solved. Um, so the peacemaker takes the uh, disputants back to those um, stories and shows them that um, uh, conflicts can be fixed and uh, by resorting to uh, the, the old stories. Yeah, because it, it, it sounds like the, the stories are almost like a metaphor in and, and that, you know, it, as, as the peacemaker tells the story, uh, you know, the, the people who are in the middle of the problem get to see a way that it's, it, it was fixed um, that's in alignment with, you know, your culture and your tradition. Is that right? Right, right. Um, again, it's grounded in relationships. Yeah, so why don't you tell us a little bit more about that? You know, when, you, when you're saying, I, I don't think a, a lot of folks will understand the depth uh, of the relationship, because you introduced yourself, you mentioned your, you know, where your mother, where your father came from, and, you know, help, help, help folks who, you know, have never, you know, been in, in your neck of the woods uh, understand how, how relationship um, uh, affects everything that you do. Um, Let's see how uh, um, it's um, relationships are key to uh, peace building or peacemaking, in that uh, it's what we call ke, and uh, that's the uh, the foundation of our um, clan system, and um, within that we also have what we call a jean, that's. Um, that's uh, beauty, and um, that's not an narcissistic term. It's a, it's a, it's a bigger term, I guess, um, like aloha. Um, it's a, a big, a, a bigger term, and to come to perfection or to that uh, harmony, uh, you have to go back to the uh, clan system and those relationships therein. And uh, it's a complex system. It'll, um, it'll take a while to discuss the clan system alone. But getting back to what we're talking about, relationships and peacemaking, um, um, for example, I was involved in this um, uh, this one case in New Mexico where this young lady was stopping the development of, of a cold fire uh, power um, plant. And um, she was up against this, uh, the Navajo Nation um, energy people and the director and this young lady were like uh, just going at it in meetings. They were just tearing each other up. There was no respect, calling each other names. And then um, they asked us to uh, step in and uh, process. And the first thing we did was um, we said, give us your clans. And the young lady, as it turns out, was a paternal relative to the executive director. And once they Establish that, that changed the dynamics of the whole um, peacemaking, um, not the peacemaking, but the whole uh, picture of uh, this development. And they uh, no longer were adversarial. They treated each other like uncle and niece after that, which um, it, turned, it turned everything around. So we rely quite heavily on that relationship um, um, building um, when when it's weak, uh, as peacemakers, we build we build that part up, and we give the, uh, in particular, the young younger people the um, the stories behind the clans, where they come from, uh, how one clan might be related to another, you know. And it gets real interesting because you talk about fire rates within the clan, the sister clans, and so it's. Um, and then it also tells the, the people establish their identity, but tells them where they're from in terms of uh, possibly a physical location. Like my clan, my mother's clan comes from Star Mountain, New Mexico, which um, is interesting. Uh, but I've also heard that Edgewater clans come from Pyramid Lake in Nevada. So um, we all have our different clan clan stories. That's great. Well, and it, you, you know, Rob, it, it kind of reminds me of that whole concept of like six degrees of separation, and that thing where you know people talk about how you're actually not that separate or that distant from somebody else. And it, it kind of feels like your your clan system 
is a way of helping reinforce the, you know, that, that sense of togetherness versus separateness. Is that right? Oh, yes, that's, that's very, that's, that's right. Um, I took my mom and my stepdad into, uh, to a cataract surgery, and uh, they're elderly, they're like in their 80s, and um, while I was waiting for them, uh, this uh, older man who was there also who had taken his uh, wife and she was getting her eyes corrected, and he was talking to me in Navajo, and he asked me my clans and stuff like that. And it turns out he's my my maternal grandfather's brother by clan. They were really close. They knew each other. And he Ooh. knew all my uh, my chays, as we called them, back from Klagato, and he told me, he goes, that's my daughter, meaning my mom. And he said, you take good care of her. He said, um, uh, make sure that, you know, she, her health is good and that she's happy. And when she came out of surgery, he, uh, he went up to her and he was talking with her and she didn't know him, but, you know, it, it was, um, I was, I was in awe, you know, to see that the clan system working that way. But, um, somebody I never knew actually knew my, uh, my Che, uh, and then so I went back home to Klagato and I asked around and all the people knew him. You know, they said, yeah, that's, um, he's, uh, he's your Che, you know, which really blew me away. Completely oh, changed. That's beautiful. Beautiful. You know, I would like to also, um, just mention to the people who are listening that, um, you told us that there was a YouTube of a Navajo peacemaking demonstration. Oh, yeah. Um, that was done April 17th, 2008, and I thought um, they might be interested in, in, in knowing about that. Yes, that particular YouTube um, video is a good source, a good reference in terms of um, the methodology of uh, Navajo peacemakers and the court systems and how they operate, and it's not much different from the way I operate, but it'll give um, the listeners uh, an avenue to... Uh, see what I'm talking about, give you um, an idea or a look into uh, the peacemaker's world and how we um, uh, tackle our problems and work with people. It's a, uh, I'm glad you brought that up. That's a, that's a really good point. Well, and I'd, like to, I'd like to remind our listeners that you're listening to the Texas Conflict Coach blog talk radio program with your guest host, Zine Zumeta, and myself, Stephen Kotev. And today I'm joined by Rob Redskier, and we're discussing Navajo peacemaking, bringing indigenous wisdom into healing community tragedies. And, you know, staying with that, Rob, why don't you talk a little bit more about the resources that you had provided with us and how you use uh, your peacemaking process to help deal with community tragedy? Um, I had mentioned earlier when I went back to school after um, – uh, working in the professional world, I met Dr. Devin Isua out of Northern Arizona University, and that was with uh, NIU's uh, Applied Indigenous Studies program. And uh, she, I took a class from her. It was the uh, federal government and the relationships with uh, the native populations here in America, and it opened my eyes to a lot of uh, what is going on, not only in Navajo but across the uh, uh, North America, and she's been key in guiding guiding me in uh, areas. She's in the uh, University of Kent right now working there. And uh, so it's from there that launched my career into peacemaking. And like I had mentioned earlier, I, I uh, interact with uh, Robert Yazi and Silmer, and um, we uh, have been working in areas like related to the environment um, and then the uh, environmental uh, groups here in the reservation, Navajo Reservation, in terms of um, getting together, uh, working our problems through communications and collaboration, and um, we produce documents in, in that light. And um, I work with uh, the Bennett Police communities as well in terms of um, telling your story, you know, letting, you know, you, you can't carry that weight on you all the time. You have to tell somebody. You have to let it out. And so um, I've been working with uh, the people impacted with relocation, Navajo and Hopi people. And um, 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 that's a new area, and it's, uh, it's really quite volatile. There's a lot of um, uh, hate feelings in that area that uh, we as Native people have to uh, come, to come to terms with because it's, um, 
it's not something we created. It uh, was created by the corporations, um, and big politicians to mine the coal in our area. So um, in that light, um, it brings about honing your uh, peacemaking skills on a bigger level and then uh, working with um, the grassroots, the middle class, and then the, the upper, the top level of society, too. So um, working in that realm, you know, in that area, in those areas has um, been quite challenging. But um, when you start seeing, like, the, the benefits have been lifted and then people are building their homes, you know, um, it's uh, it gives you a good feeling, you know, to, to talk with them, you know, to, to help them in some ways, like um, bringing in, like, the proper agency for uh, the proper plumbing, you know, the, the standards for houses and stuff like that. So, um, in that in that way, it's you know, it, it's rewarding. But uh, the work continues. You know, conflict is always there. So, can you give some other examples of the kinds of, of programs that you've worked on? Um, uh, yes. Um, let's see. Um, we're working at. Um, uh, on a global level, I'm working with the tribes of the Manipur in Northeast India. Uh, uh, they're coming over the, in um, this fall. Uh, wow. September, October time frame. Uh, the 25 of them are coming over, and uh, they're spending 20 days with us, the Navajo people, and um, um, we're going to be working on peacemaking and cultural activities, you know, the um, how we work with horses, um, uh, hunting skills, uh, basically cultural um, activities um, uh, with the Nav- or Navajo people, and then uh, then they're going to be showing us their dancing and how they address um, uh, their colonization problems through dancing, uh, the wow. movements they use. And so... Um, uh, then we'd like to fuse um, uh, students from uh, the Navajo population and uh, some of the tribes of the Manipur that are coming, the Naga people, they come over, we're going to be working with them to uh, uh, start a program where we fuse the two indigenous cultures and um, work toward the healing process uh, of um, you know, this um, colonization process. <laughs> well, so, Rob, for, for folks who aren't familiar, tell us a little bit about, so, where, where, where are these, where are these, uh, are, are these, what's the name of the, the tribe that's coming over and where are they from? Uh, they're basically, uh, I think the majority of them, there's 16 tribes. Um, the majority of them are Naga. Uh, they come from Northeast India. Um, okay. It's, uh, it's, um, I can't wow, pronounce the name of the Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and it sounds like the kinds of ceremonies that they're talking about are similar to what you were talking about with the beauty way. Can you can you tell us more about the beauty way ceremonies? Yeah, it's um, it's been year round because some ceremonies are held in the winter and some are held in the summertime. But the beauty way is our main uh, the foundation for all our ceremonies. I'll say. Are, are branch off from the beauty way. And if you can visualize a corn stalk, you know, where uh, uh, you have the, the fruit, I mean, let's the corn and the, the leaves and the pollen, the roots, that's what we call the corn stalk philosophy, and that's mm-hmm. where the beauty way comes from. And uh, oh. it's a healing process. It, it's a two-day uh, ceremony. And um, when my oldest son was uh, about to be... Um, to make his appearance in the world. Uh, before his arrival, we had a beauty way ceremony for him to make sure um, to ensure that everything was good and uh, and it did work. You know, he's um, very healthy. He's a great young man. He's doing good things in the world. But um, when you come or fall out of balance um, with nature, um, which could be with you know through alcoholism or uh, domestic issues. Uh, um, substance abuse issues, um, we usually resort to the beauty way to bring that person back into balance with yeah. nature, with, with the universe, um, uh, with, uh, with the animal world, with the birds. You know, it's, uh, it's a beautiful ceremony. It's, it's sung. 
it's um it's there's prayer and there's ceremony uh there's a a healer a singer that guides it and with his or her assistance um they um uh, they transform you from a place of conflict and they bring you back into to balance and then uh you're in the uh the world of the holy people when you get back into that uh state and it's um here's the weird part it's not only the person that's um being uh, brought into balance, but it's a collective um, group. And I like to go to beauty way ceremonies because when I listen to the songs and the prayers and observe the ceremony, I become part of that uh, healing process. And when I walk away from the ceremony, I feel so good. It's just a, it's just an amazing feeling. Wow, hey, Rob! It, Rob, it sounds it sounds to me very much as what they would say. You know, it's it's like a, another way of saying you have it's like a holistic process or you know holistic medicine. In that the, the approach that you're using isn't just like about one individual. It's about the the it, it's sort of like the the ripples in a pond. You know, if you have two people who have a problem, it doesn't just affect them. It goes through and ripples elsewhere. And that you know sounds like a lot of the work that you're doing is is kind of taking acknowledging that on multiple levels in the sense of a relationship between people, but also their sort of personal well-being, which it sounds like, you know, a lot of the, the traditions that you use are trying to sort of take care of, of everybody and, and acknowledge that everybody is impacted by it. Is that accurate? Uh, yes, it is. Um, it's, uh, um, it's inclusive. It's uh, um, it's uh Let's see, uh, when a, a, a young woman um, uh, has her first um, menstrus, um, a, a ceremony is held, and it's not just for the young lady, but it's for the community to come together in celebration for uh, her new uh, station in life. And uh, it's a four-day ceremony, and um, the beauty way is actually tied into this, too. And... Um, the songs, are, the beauty way songs are sung, the prayers are said, and um, it uh, represents uh, womanhood on one level, but on many other levels, it brings in the whole community in celebration of uh, this one particular particular lady and then her family and how they relate to the community as well. So. Uh, it's a it's a it's a healing process. Yes, the beauty way ceremony um, addresses one person, but on other levels, it um, brings in family members and um, brings in everybody together that way. Well, as we start to wind the show down, Rob, you know, if you were to have a, a call to action for our listeners, you know, what would that be? What would you call them to do? Um, how how would Navajo peacemaking work in your world? Um, that was that's how that's a question that I normally put to people uh, outside the Navajo um, world, uh, whatever their background. I usually ask them, you know, study Navajo peacemaking for a little bit, reference that YouTube uh, video, uh, do some reading on it, and uh, reflect on it, see how it would work in your world. Because I, uh, young people in particular tell me that it doesn't work, but um, I found the opposite to be true. And if people wanted to reach you, Rob, how could they reach you? Well, the best way is uh, through my Gmail account. Um, that's rritzjrjr at Gmail. That's, um, I live in a really isolated area, and uh, cell reception is horrible. But I give out my phone number, but that's a big source of frustration for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so it's the email. Great. And I think that's on, on the on the website also that that um, email yes, address. It is. Yes, it and, is. And if it's not, it's r r e d s t e e r j r at gmail dot com. Closing comments, Rob. Anything you want to say to to folks before we uh, close out the show? Wow. Yeah. Uh, have a good day, people. Um, have uh, be nice to people and um, do something good. An act of kindness. Thank you. Beautiful. Well, thank, thank you, Rob. Thank you, Esteban. Thank you, Vina. 
Thank you for listening to the Texas Conflict Coach. We hope you've enjoyed the program. You can find over 300 podcasts archived to listen at your own convenience at texasconflictcoach.com or download the podcast at iTunes or Stitcher Radio. To learn about upcoming radio programs and resources, sign up for our monthly e-newsletter.